he shoots the glass behind him and tries to warn his comrades of the upcoming bomb, but when he tries to escape, the soldiers shoot him to death. With a heavy heart, Quok asks for a go-ahead to launch attacks. The movie begins with Eom Chol Woo, a former North Korean Special Forces agent who has become an addict, buying a narcotic. When he gets inside the room, he thinks the police are arresting him. Instead, he sees his previous commander, Chief Director Ri Tae Han of the Reconnaissance General Bureau. Tae Han shows him photos of Kim Do Won and Park Gwang Dong and believes they're up to something, thinking it's a coup d'etat. He says he tried to gather some intel and found out that the two of them have been in touch with Ryu and Chin of State Security to sell them out to the Chinese. He says that the problem is that the two are blocking access to the great leader, and because of that, he can't report the situation to him. So he has no choice but to get rid of them so he can report to the great leader. Eom asks why not the agents in the field, and he says that Park has the Supreme Guard command, and Kim has state security troops. So if one of their agents fails to kill them, there will be war. Tehan tells him that if he accomplishes the mission, he'll become a hero who saves the country from a coup. His family will get the respect and privilege that come with that. After hearing that, he accepts the mission. In Pyongyang, Eom killed Kim and Ryu. The news reaches the Chinese, and Li, an ethnic Korean in charge of the Korean branch of China's state security, informs Kwok that the last intel he got from Ryu is there will be massive purges in North Korea, so he thinks the accident is part of it. The next day, Kwok informs Li, the incumbent president, of news he heard from Li. He says that it sounds like the power struggles in the North have gotten severe. However, when Kwok asks him if he'll inform Kim, Li wants to keep the information private, saying that he'll eventually find out. At night, Eom eats with his family. He tells his daughter, In Young, that she's pretty, adorable, intelligent, and gets good grades, but he reminds her not to listen to any South Korean music. However, In Young asks him if he heard about G-Dragon, but he nags her telling her that listening to music from the South could get all of them killed. Later that night, after he puts In Young to bed, he gives the money to his wife. He says they gave him a mission again and that she and In Young will be sent to the embassy in Cuba soon. When Eom is about to leave, In Young rushes to him to say goodbye. He then departs for Kaesong Industrial Region to finish his mission. The following day, the military arrives in the city. Meanwhile, Park is paying his respect to the fallen comrade and orders to launch the plan. A lot of North Korean personnel infiltrate the South through an underground tunnel. They disguise themselves as ROK Army soldiers and steal a steel rain bomber. On the other hand, Taehan gets notified that the great leader went for Kaesong himself, and Park has mobilized the entire Supreme Guard command. When Taehan asks where Park is, the soldier says he's in Pyongyang. Eom searches through the public in Kaesong but needs help finding Park, and only the great leader and the Chinese are present. He tries to notify the commander but doesn't receive any signal there. Back in Pyongyang, Park's men kill the government officers and start the coup. Suddenly, the rocket launcher launches steel rain bomb, killing the crowds in Kaesong. The United States sees this and destroys the launcher, but the North manages to throw another bomb at Kaesong before being destroyed. E. Ohm survives the first bomb and almost gets hit in the second one. He then goes out of his location and sees how the power-hungry Park kills his people to be in charge. The damage is massive for both the North and the Chinese. In addition, Park's men come to ensure there are no survivors and plan to blame the Americans for the incident. While a gunfight ensues, Eom and two schoolgirls, fortunately, rescue the gravely injured great leader in a toy company van. However, the Chinese pack the border, and the great leader bleeds badly. Luckily, the Chinese ambassador called the North officers, and they opened the border gate. However, the place turns into a battlefield between the reels and the officers shortly after Park's men arrive. Meanwhile, in the Blue House, the incumbent President Lee welcomes the newly elected President Kim. Suddenly, Park comes to notify the two presidents that an MLRS from the United States Army 2nd Division went missing at dawn. About 20 minutes ago, the seized MLRS fired two steel rain bombs at Kaesong. He says that the ROK-US Combined Forces Command wants them to issue DEFCON 3. Meanwhile, Kwok arrives and interrupts them. He says that the Chinese Ministry of Foreign Affairs requested them to let their people in Kaesong through the Inter-Korean Transit Office into their country, to which they agreed. Finally, Eom and the girls enter the South safely after the gate gets opened. Later that night, Kwok meets with CIA Station Chief Joanne Martin, who absolves the United States of responsibility for the incident. He asks her how she could leak it to the press without consulting them first, and she says the United States is concerned that the North may declare war against the South due to the change of control. 
they bring the great leader to a clinic at night to save him. However, the doctor says they're closed for the day, and it turns out to be a gynecologist who can't keep him. Eom threatens her, and she reluctantly treats the great leader's wound. She saves him with a blood donation from one of the girls, but she can't take out a bullet near his brain. Then, Eom calls Tehan telling him they got bombed and the guard command shot each other. When Tehan learns that the great leader is still alive with Eom, he tells him to stay with him, guard him at all costs, and wait for his men to arrive. Later, the North comes to retrieve the great leader. Unfortunately, when he notices them, they're the rebels. So he instructs the doctor and the two girls to get inside with the great leader. Eom kills them with a scalpel, and when another rebel enters the room, he fights with Eom. They fight on hand for quite some time, but Eom manages to break his neck. Then, Eom and the others leave the clinic with the surviving rebel on their trail. A bullet hits one of the girls protecting the great leader, and she bleeds badly. Seeing the condition, the doctor tells Eom to take her to a big hospital, but he says she must find a place to treat them secretly. So she calls her friend, Su Hyung, Kwok's divorced wife. Su Hyung tries to treat her, but they're already too late. At the same time, Eom, who is in another room, takes advantage of the opportunity to inject himself with narcotics. Meanwhile, Kwok is notified of the shootings near the border and remembers Su Hyung's friend. He immediately calls Su Hyung, but she doesn't answer, so he calls his child and learns she's with the doctor. He then tells his colleague that he'll go to Su Hyung's clinic and wants him to call him after an hour. If his phone is off or doesn't pick up, he wants him to send the special forces immediately. Eom ties him up with the South Koreans when he gets there. However, South Korean special forces soon detain Eom. Kwok reveals his identity and tries to negotiate with Eom, as both want to save the great leader from preventing the war between the North and South. But, the North declared war against the United States and the South, leading President Lee to declare martial law in the South. Then, the South's niche come to save Kwok. In the Blue House, the United States advises the South to declare war to prevent additional damage to the country. Luckily, before President Lee arrives at a decision, Kwok informs them that he has the great leader. In the clinic, Kwok gets a box of things his men found on the scene, the military uniform and chocolates. When he finds the great leader's watch, he asks his colleague to send it to the digital forensic lab. Meanwhile, the special forces take Eom and the girl. They sent them for a polygraph test, where they see that the results say that everything he's saying is accurate and that the girl knows nothing. Later, he gets informed that Byung Jin leaked the information about him getting the great leader while he was bringing him. His colleague says that those in the North will come to confirm in person and talk. After their conversation, he visits Eom with a burger. He tells him that he saw on the investigation report that he's also a Chul Wu, so maybe they were meant to cross paths. Despite Kwok talking, he gets no response from Eom, so he removes the blanket covering his whole body to find him experiencing narcotics withdrawal symptoms. Eom asks Kwok to give him painkillers, and when Kwok hands them to him, he tells him that he should get treated for his addiction and quit using them for a good while he's there. Later, Eom says that if their leader recovers, Park's coup will fail, so Tehan will come to ensure that's the case. He then asks Kwok to take him to where the meeting will be, and he'll explain the situation to Taihan. After that, Kwok talks to Byung Jin, telling him that Eom is close enough to Taihan to report to him in person, so he wants to send him to the meeting, but Byung Jin declines the proposal. So, Kwok and Eom depart on their own. Kwok gets a gun and some things to help them. Then, they drive in a car with Eom handcuffed. On their way, Kwok eventually opens up while Eom is still being a snob. Later, they stop by to get some food. Kwok is enjoying his food inside the restaurant and notices Eom staring at him. He tells him to dig in, and eventually, Eom accepts him. When Kwok sees that he's struggling to eat with his handcuffs, he decides to cuff Eom and sit beside him. After finishing his food, Kwok orders more for him, and Eom says that he hasn't eaten anything since he left Kaesong. He then adds that the Kwok ate the whole burger. After Eom sees how Kwok treats the North defector waitress, he changes his heart, causing Kwok to uncuff him. Long after, they continue their trail. On their way, Kwok asks Eom if he has any family because he noticed that he left that information blank on his statement. When Kwok talks about his children and ex-wife, he shares that he also has a family. He asks Kwok if he knows G-Dragon, and Kwok says everyone knows G-Dragon. Kwok asks him if he's been to the South before as a spy, but he says that his daughter likes him, so Kwok plays his music and sings and dances to it. Later, they arrive at their destination and observe the meeting from afar. Unfortunately, they can't confirm if Tehan is there. Kwok instructs him to call Tehan and tell him they're close by because they need him to invite them to join them. When Eom gets out of the car to call Tehan, 
they suddenly hear gunshots and witness the representative's death, causing the meeting to end. The rebels follow a surviving car with Quok and Eom on their tail. Even though Eom kills the insurgents, the vehicle gets caught in an accident. When they stop to rescue the representatives in the car, Eom finds that the representative is Park. He immediately kills him to finish his mission. Quok gets mad, telling him that Park is their only chance to stop the war. Suddenly, the snipers are back, and Eom saves Quok from the shot but gets himself shot instead. In the Blue House, Quok tells them that the situation in the North will get sorted out soon because the coup's instigator is dead. President Lee then presented a recording of Byung Jin until the moment he died. He then decides to push through the preemptive nuclear strike in Pyongyang. Meanwhile, a team of neurosurgeons is operating on the great leader. As Kwok watches, a doctor approaches him, telling him that Eom has metastatic lung and stage 4 pancreatic cancer. This causes him to experience a neurogenic shock, and he could die any minute. Even with knowing all this, Kwok couldn't inform Eom about it. Instead, he asks why he killed Park. Eom says it was his mission because he's the coup's instigator. Kwok says it's weird because he wouldn't come and risk his life if he were the instigator. Kwok then receives a call, interrupting his conversation with Eom. He learns that the watch from the great leader is a nuclear code generator. Back in Pyongyang, Tae Han is preparing himself to become the new leader. When he arrives at the military base, he starts shooting people. He then asks for the detonator and the code generator, to which one of the soldiers says the code generator must be too. He says that great leaders keep the other on him at all times. Meanwhile, Kwok talks to Eom in the hospital, telling him that retracting the declaration of war can stop the nuclear strike. So Eom asks for his phone, and Kwok hands it to him, saying he has many missed calls from Tehan. He then calls Tehan, informs him that American nuclear bombers are on their way now, and persuades him to retract the war declaration. However, Tehan asks him to bring the watch, the code generator. When Kwok informs him that the watch is a code generator to launch a missile, he starts doubting his faith in Tehan. Then, he tells him that Tehan plans to set off a nuclear missile as an EMP explosion to kill the South's communication. The North's special forces will seize Seoul and force the United States to negotiate with them. Meanwhile, the North started bombing the Blue House, and the military from the hospital went to protect the president. However, Eom tells Kwok that it's a decoy and their real target is the hospital. The rest of the soldiers from the North infiltrate the hospital. One of the North gets in a fight with Eom. When he thought he shot the great leader, he uncovers to discover that it was just a dead body that Eom pretended to be watching. Later, the South Special Forces arrive and kill the remaining North soldier. They then transfer the great leader to another hospital to continue his operation. After that, Eom talks to Kwok outside and tells him he plans to bring the watch to Tai Han, but they will put a tracker in it. He says they can use him as bait, which he'll deliver to Tai Han, and the South will bomb his location. Meanwhile, the United States has launched four missiles, targeting significant cities in the North. However, Tae Han hacked the nuclear system, and they successfully hacked into a rocket and launched the nuclear at Japan. On the other hand, Japan intercepts it and explodes the North's missile in mid-air. Kwok tells Eom what happened and suggests that he leaks false information that the great leader is dead. Because if they think their assassination plan worked, it will buy them some time. In the meantime, the president ordered another strike. However, the United States won't do it because if so, the North threatens to bomb Japan, its close ally. Later, President Lee, Kwok, and one employee later talk about the North's nukes. Kwok tells them they never permitted him, but he'll take full responsibility. But the president gives him his permission and tells him to try everything they can do. The next day, he goes to Eom at the hospital and agrees to his plan. Eom gets dressed in his military uniform, and Kwok hands him the watch telling him that they removed the code generator and installed a tracker. Then, Kwok drives him to the tunnel. Before separating, Eom says they must send the girl back to the north if everything goes well. Kwok is about to get the things Eom bought in the car, but he says that if something happens, he wants him to send them to his family. Then, he thanks Kwok for everything and leaves. When he gets inside the tunnel, the soldiers immediately take him to Tai Han. When he gets to Tai Han, he takes him hostage and forces him to confess that he killed the great leader. Then, he presses the button on the watch for South to attack. He shoots the glass behind him and tries to warn his comrades of the upcoming bomb, but when he tries to escape, the soldiers shoot him to death. With a heavy heart, Kwok asks for a go-ahead to launch attacks. As the missiles hit the bunker, they both say goodbye to one another as he gets killed together with Tae Han. Sometime later, President Kim was inaugurated and promised to establish peace between North and South. Kwok visits the North as the representative and negotiates peace with the great leader as the South's bargaining chip. Then, 
he sees Eom's family and delivers his gift to her daughter. The movie ends with the North agreeing to send over half of its nuclear weapons to the South in exchange for their great leader as a first step toward a unified Korea. Thank you for watching. Subscribe for more videos like this to help the channel out. Have a nice day.